Factoring using difference of squares. How do we do that? Hey, <laughs> let me show you something that's actually pretty cool. If we were to take the square root of x squared, we would see that it's x. And if we were to take the square root of 9, we would know that it's 3. So those two terms are perfect squares, right? And then that minus sign means difference, so it's the difference of two squares. Oh, so that's where it comes from. I'm taking the difference of two squares, and once I know that this is a perfect square, and that's a perfect square, and there's a minus sign, I just write it like this. x plus 3 and x minus 3. Why? Well, because the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3, and then all we do is put a plus and a minus, and we are done. Easy here. Oh, see? I can catch. All right. We have two perfect squares, and I'm not talking about squares that look like this. And I'm not talking about squares like what they used to call manual in elementary school. I'm talking about a square when you can take the square root of something. Always look to see if you have two perfect squares, and the key thing aside from that is the minus sign right there. Once we have that, we know that it's a difference of two squares. So we can go ahead and say that we would have two binomials, one would have a plus, and one would have a minus, and then all we do is take the square root of each term. The square root of 81x squared is 9x, and I'll put 1 here, and I'll put 1 there. So I'll put 9x and 9x, and then the square root of 16, and we just look at 16. We don't look at the minus sign because we've already taken care of that right here. And it would be 4 and 4. One thing that I had mentioned when factoring in the video of factoring was that we always re want to remember to take out the greatest common factor first. That would always be our first step. Now that's not going to change even when we're doing difference of squares because we're still factoring. So sometimes, or let me say all the time, again, all the time, we want to go ahead and make sure that we take out the greatest common factor. It will make factoring difference of squares much easier. So let's see. Let's look at each term and find out if they have a greatest common factor. Well, I know that 4 goes into both 16 and 4, so we can take out a 4. And then when we're dealing with the variables and their exponents, remember, the key tip in that is just as long as they have the same variable, we take out the smallest exponent. And that would be a squared. So our greatest common factor would be 4a squared because our smallest exponent is 2. Now we go ahead and write what's left over once we factor out. And the way we can do that is ask ourselves, 4a squared times what will give me 16 a to the 6th power. Well, again, remember, we just go ahead and ask ourselves by looking at the numbers, 4 times what gives me 16? And that's 4. And then we have two a's, but we need a to the 6th power, so we would want to multiply that by a to the 4th. And then we go ahead and bring down the minus sign. And since we took out a 4a squared, we go ahead and put a 1, because 4a squared times 1 gives me 4a squared. Now we factor this. Okay, we want to look in here to see if that's a difference of squares. Well, 4a, squ 4a to the fourth power is a perfect square. There's a minus sign, so all we need now is to make sure the next term's a perfect square. And 1 is a perfect square, because the square root of 1 is 1. So this would be a difference of squares, again, because we have a perfect square, a perfect square, and there's that minus sign, which is difference. So it's the difference of two squares. So by doing that, let's go ahead and take the difference of squares. Now, let me tell you guys a little secret. Whenever we have an exponent to an even power, remember, an exponent to an even power we can go ahead and already know that that's a perfect square because you can always divide even numbers by 2. So now we would just bring this down, 4a squared, and it would be times. And remember, since we're doing the difference of squares, we just treat that as a difference of squares factoring problem. So that would be 2a squared plus 1 
times 2a squared minus 1. Because the terms in here are just the square root of this, and the terms right here are the square root of that, and we just put our plus and our minus. And then we just bring down the greatest common factor. So this would be the answer right here.